today we're going to be doing a tri-tip in the sous vide. I'm thinking I'll probably do it around 130 degrees, 131 degrees. And I'm going to let this one go for a while. Uh, it'll probably go close to 15 hours. I'll throw it on tonight and uh, tomorrow I'll sear it up when it's ready for dinner. But right now I trimmed it up a little bit and I'm going to throw this on the smoker first. From my experience, uh, with sous vide it. You sous vide it first and then smoke later, you, uh, you still get all the benefits of the flavor, but you really miss out on the smoke ring. So, I'm a person, I know it doesn't add to the flavor, but I like the looks of a smoke ring, so that's what I'm shooting for. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it on the smoker now until it reaches maybe around 120 degrees. Then I'll put it in the ice bath, let it chill out in the fridge until I'm ready to throw it in the sous vide unit. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off a little bit of this fat cap. A little bit more. This is just a cheap choice brisket. Uh, it was on sale at my local grocery store for $2.99 a pound. So, you know, it hasn't really been butchered up as far as removing all the fat, which, which is fine. I, I like leaving the fat on it to me as flavor. But some of these pieces are a little, little excess. So we'll go ahead and clean some of this up. And I know, yeah, I should be wearing gloves, but you know, this whole craziness is going on right now. It's extremely hard to find gloves. Extremely hard, so. Not in the works. Not too bad. No, no, trim it kind of like I do a brisket, quarter inch thick. Uh, I save a lot of this fat. I'll render it down, make some tallow, uh, or like if I throw it in the smoker and say if I was going to wrap it, I would wrap it with this fat. And this really helps bring some moisture. Uh, in fact, I'll probably throw this in the sous vide bag and we'll see what it does. But it's pretty basic about as much fat as I want to get out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and season it with some of this Suckle Busters 1836 beef rub. I mean, this stuff right here is one of my favorites. It's very bold, very coarse, amazing with beef. If you get a chance to try this, I would highly, highly recommend this for I honestly, I got a quite a bit of their products. You got like a little variety pack of their chicken beef. Uh, I haven't tried the chicken one yet, but uh, I got the beef I've tried. I've tried the pork. I'm gonna try one of the other ones. And so far, all these have been fantastic. I'm really becoming a fan of the supple busters. There's a lot of good rubs out there, but this is definitely up there for me. And it will always be in my pantry. See, it has that nice Texas salt pepper look to it. And you don't want to rub the meat, you just kind of want to pat it in. Don't worry about it too much on the fat cat side. I put it there, but I don't get too technical on it. And from my experience, when you, when you hold the rub up a little higher, it works a lot better, it sprays more and more. All right, well, that's good enough for me right here. Make sure I get the side a little bit more. And you know, I don't know, I don't, I don't need a binder or anything like that. As long as it's got plenty of moisture, it's on its own just fine. The reason why I'm throwing this on the smoker right now, instead of Closer to the time I'm gonna put it in the sous vide, you know, because I might throw the smoke in there. It's pretty much gonna go in an ice bath to cool down to a safe temperature back in the fridge is because today it's gonna to be 111 degrees outside. And I don't feel like supplying enough to smoke right at 111 degrees. So it's early in the morning, I'm gonna get it done now, get the smoke on it, and then I'm just gonna let it sit in the water bath. And I wanna to go to 
sleep, do my thing, and when it's close to dinner time, I'll figure out how I'm going to screw this. I haven't really decided yet, but we'll figure something out. Alright, so let me go ahead and get my smoker all fired up, let this sit for, you know, half hour or something like that, let all this rub kind of get moist in it and stick. Uh, you know what I'm thinking I'm going to do? I think I am going to use the magic horn. I don't really ever use this thing, to be honest here. And I'm not using it for a tenderizing effect. I'm actually going to use it to see if I can push some of those spices deeper in the meat. sit for a little bit, let this rub still penetrate a little bit more. I don't know about penetrate, but uh, get some moisture in it and kind of help. So that way it helps build a better little crust. Uh, I'm gonna throw this on the smoker at, I think 250, somewhere around there. So I'll fire it up and uh, see what we got. So we have a few options. We have my Chimp, and then my newest baby, the Grill OG. So, let's do the old school. Any, mini, money, mo, catch a tiger by its toe. If it follows, let it go. Any, mini, money, mo. Let's hope so, because I love this baby. So let's go ahead and uh, get some pellets in it fire it up and get this tri-tip going. Today I'm going to be using 100% hickory pellets from cookingpellets.com. These are really, really good pellets, high quality. Can't say enough good things about them. Um, really good flavor, low ash. I do enjoy them. Uh, I have a couple of their flavors. I have the 100% hickory. I have their black cherry and I have their perfect mix which is a mix of hickory, apple, maple, and I believe, I can't remember what the other one, there's some other mix in there. Uh, the only one I haven't got to try, they have an apple mash and uh, that'd be pretty good on some pork, but this is a good one. Uh, I was able to find a local dealer, so I got a pretty good deal on them. But that's what we'll be putting in the grill OG. Got her all filled up, shut it down, get it plugged in, and fire her up. And it's already where I wanted at 250. Uh, I think I'm going to ride this one in mode 2. Mode 2 is the swinging mode, so it's going to create a little bit more fluctuation, a little bit more smoke flavor. So, 250, mode two, let's get her going. Okay, I got her opened up. I'm gonna go ahead and put the tri-tip on the upper rack. And then, you know what? Let's go, yeah, let's go fat cap top. Keep the fat cap there. up pretty soon she'll start smoking and uh, get a nice little bath so I'll we'll check back in a minute all right she's starting up and she's getting ready to start smoking like a monster this thing is an absolute beast at smoking
start up some more. And uh, so far from my experience, she's been doing this the whole time. Uh, I did a pork butt. This will be my second cook on this new real OG. Uh, but the pork butt, man, she smoked like a champ like this pretty much the whole time. And then we got this little window down here. And you can see the fire going. It's kind of cool. I didn't clean the glass, but uh, it's a cool little eye candy. I'm absolutely in love with this grill. Like, I really wish I didn't wait so long to get it. I mean, I love my champ. It's a great little tailgate and grill. Still heavy duty built, you know. I mean, they just got quality products. But yeah, it's gonna be a good little smoke. Let's go ahead and put a thermometer in it. I will be using my Inkbird 4 probe. It's a Wi-Fi one. Love this grill. This uh, thermometer, it actually is extremely accurate, and if it wasn't, I could calibrate it. But it's been pretty reliable. So, yeah, I use it. It's probably my go-to one. The thicker area right here. And, uh, let's close her up and let her do her thing check back when she hits about 120. So I've been curious to see how uh, the temperature holds compared. So I got 196, it's warm enough. 190, 195. So I mean, it's, this thing just holds temp dead accurate. It's uh, pretty amazing. And we'll see how it progresses throughout the cook. But I just hit 202. It's just showing 200 now, I just hit 200. So, definitely happy with that. Alright guys, back, let's open her up. I think I overshot it a little bit, the thermometer didn't, uh, I don't think it was 100%, but let's see. Let's check it with the thermal works. Uh, yeah, one, 136, 137, that's a little bit much. I really like it around 130, 134. Yeah, I overshot a little bit. Highest is 138, 139. Well, it is what it is, right? But yeah, I like my stuff uh, on the lighter side of medium rare. But let's go ahead and uh, let's pull her off, man. Not looking too bad. Nice little mahogany color. So, I'll go ahead and get her rested up a little bit, throw her in an ice bath, and then we'll uh, get her in that sous vide. All right, it's uh, 9 a.m. the next morning. I was planning on putting it on around 12 a.m. at night, but uh, yeah, there was some tequila involved and a few more adult beverages, and it didn't work out as planned. So we're gonna make the best out of it. We'll at least get eight hours in the SUV, which it still turns out great. So let's go ahead and. Uh, Get this in there. I set my sous vide unit at 131 degrees for eight hours. This is uh, my Inkbird sous vide. It's been really reliable for me. So get this in. And one thing I do is I I like to put magnets on the outside. It just kind of weighs it down, make sure it doesn't float. That's the the last thing you want right there is to have the meat flowing. So I set this in for start. And see it in eight hours. All right, it's been pretty much almost exactly eight hours, and it's been running at 
131 degrees so I'm going to take it off and get ready to sear it. It is pretty hot outside so I'm not going to fire up any charcoal or do anything like that like normally I do. Uh, I'm just going to hit it with the torch. It's 111 degrees right now outside so yeah I don't want to mess with it. But here she is. She never floated which is good. So I'll let her cool down on the counter for maybe like 10-15 minutes. All right, let's get this torched. guys excuse me for the noise that's all the air conditioner is going like I said it's a uh, about 111 degrees right now so, this bad boy down the middle watch out for all these flies Let's see not too bad slices and I'm heading inside the house because flies are gonna get crazy oh, there you go sous vide tri-tip eight hours 131 uh, it will blossom a little bit more too once it hits oxygen and get a little redder but that's pretty much there she is I well, hope you guys enjoyed this video please like and subscribe